I felt so sorry for her. In another era, she'd have been like Elizabeth the First. She would have been, I think, given she the She might have kicked Elizabeth the First's butt. <laughs> I'm she not so sure about that, but I think, I think cause I, because I think she was very impulsive. And I think that she only learned wisdom in a very hard school later on in life. Can we use the word lusty? Yes, we can. Yes, because uh, I'm happy to. She's to married. Starts off the book married to Louis the Seventh of France, and that was not a very happy marriage. And she said, "I had married a monk and not a king," and that just about sums it up, because Louis wasn't interested in her physically. In fifteen years of marriage, they only had two daughters, spaced very far apart. And. Uh, about sex, about as often as you know, probably yes. Minimum because necessary. He, he should have been a monk. I mean, he should have been a religious. I mean, that was his main interest in life, and or making wars. But um, <laughs> rather, a rather a man of contrasts. Uh, and it's very funny at the beginning because she's looking forward to seeing an ex lover that she's had on the side. Um, I don't know about looking forward, she's terrified well, in case either of them betray mm. the fact that they have had an affair, because if, if so, if, if that came out, it would be more or less death for her. But then she sees he's brought Junior along. Yes, absolutely, and of course she's, that's, that's the end of it, she's not interested in her father anymore. It's the son, and of course the son is Henry of Anjou, the future Henry II of England. Thank goodness you put a map in, uh, because... I need you to. Because we think France is France. Yes. And and France is in the map this kind of skinny thing. I mean, it had yeah, yeah. it had more power than it should have for its size. Absolutely yes. Although I mean, France at that time was divided into all these dukedoms and counties and little feudatories. The Kingdom of France centres around Paris and Orléans, the area around there. It's tiny, and yet the King of France is overlord of all the other rulers in what is now France. And she has Aquitaine, which is a, a lovely, it's about huge section of the country. It's about half of France, actually, and it stretches south from the Loire River to the Pyrenees and, and, and east from the Atlantic Ocean to the Massif Central. And uh, the people of Aquitaine not that happy being ruled by foreigners? Absolutely not. They didn't like the French presence because, of course, Eleanor was married at 15 to the King of France. And immediately his officers and soldiers came in. He took possession of Aquitaine in right of her. And then after her divorce from Louis and she married Henry the, well, the future Henry II, he sends all his officers down there, a load of Normans this time. And the French and the, the Aquitanians really resent that. And they're an unruly lot anyway. She marries Henry thinking they're going to have a very Aquitaine relationship. Yes, that's Because true. Aquitaine's a, it's a pretty modern place. It is. Women have far more rights there than they do elsewhere. They're very much the subordinate sex in, in Northern Europe and the rest of Christendom. But in Aquitaine, women had a lot of rights and there was perceived by outsiders to be an awful lot of moral laxity. In fact, it was said that the whole place was one vast brothel. So when Eleanor went to France, a rather straight-laced Dorn in a French kingdom, when she was 15, she brought with her a reputation she hadn't even yet deserved. <laughs> she thinks she has a deal with, uh, with Henry. Yes, she does. She sees a partnership of princes. She sees that it makes political, although this is, a, this is a relationship founded initially on lust, very soon they both come to the realisation this makes great political sense to join all his lands in the north and England, which he hopes to inherit, with her lands of Aquitaine. And of course, when he does inherit England, he's married Eleanor, his empire, the Angevin Empire, stretches from the Scottish border right down to the Pyrenees. And she thinks, being an Aquitanian, that um, she and she's going to have some autonomy in her own domains. But Henry, being a traditional alpha male, has other ideas. And that was heartbreaking because, and mm. because she's pretty smart. She is indeed, and she's quite capable of ruling. She understands her people far more than Henry ever will. He doesn't understand the troubadour culture of the South, the, the, you know, the art of courtly love that flourished there. And he sees that just as an excuse for adultery. But he doesn't understand her people. He thinks he can just put his iron, you know, his male fist in, into Aquitaine and he can, you know, he can keep, he can establish control. She understands that her barons are not going to put up with that. My family squabbles, every family squabbles. I'm sure your of family squabbles. Of course they do, yes. Um, but my family squabbles uh, don't involve vast armies attacking each other. No, they don't. No, absolutely. Of course, this was a fact that the, these these were the, the, called the Devil's Brood, Henry, the family of Henry and Eleanor, and um, they were believed to be descended from the devil through his daughter, a witch, Melusine. And Henry II was fond of repeating this story and shocking people, particularly churchmen. 
But it was seen that people believed that because of the way they behaved, they were indeed descended from the devil because they ended up warring with each other. It was Henry wouldn't devolve any power to his many sons, and they all wanted it, of course, as they grew to manhood, and he denied them. So they rose in rebellion, and Eleanor with them. He puts her in a tower. It's like something out of some horrible medieval fairy tale. That was quite kind, actually, because he could have had her executed, if you think about it. I mean, he could have done that because she'd not only betrayed him as a wife, she'd committed treason. Well, because she had encouraged, well, what was her, well... She had, she had joined forces with her former husband and over, an overlord, Louis, the, Louis the VII. Uh, he was then Henry's enemy against him with her son, in supporting her son. She'd enlisted the help of the King of France and that's like enlisting the help of the enemy. That's but, treason. And the, the fact that you're a woman describing um, a strong female character, mm -hmm. you think that gives you a huge advantage? I think so. I don't know how strong I am. Sometimes I don't feel very strong at all, especially when I have to get on a plane. <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, yes, perhaps it does, because I, I, empath I felt I could get inside her head and actually be her on occasion and trying to think, how did she get from this point to that point? Because historically, it's not clear. But as a novelist, you've got to make it clear. So you've got to think about what her motives would have been, you know, what, what her reactions were, her emotions. And so literally, it, it felt like a very psychological novel. Yeah, I would say. It, it, it was a psychological journey through her life, and imagining all the time and empathising with her. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> the book is Captive Queen, a novel of Eleanor of Aquitaine. I've been speaking with the author Alison Weir, and Captive Queen is published by Doubleday Canada.